Hi, I'm Nick Bonner for TreeStuff.com, and today we're going to do soup to nuts rigging, or the basics of and fundamentals of rigging a tree and all the different types of equipment that you need and the things you might consider when you're choosing that equipment. The first thing that you need on any tree care job is PPE. That's going to be head, ear, eye protection, the right kind of pants, not shorts, right? You need closed toed shoes and all those things. We have videos on arborist boots, eye protection, ear protection, uh, head protection, uh, all of those things in depth. Feel free to check them out. We also have a complete video on how to pick tree climbing gear, which is kind of the uh, pair to this video. And that'll cover all of the equipment that you need and the considerations that you would make if you're going to climb the tree to do aerial rigging. So uh, definitely check out that video if you have any questions about the climbing equipment involved. Um, today we're just going to cover the rigging equipment. The next thing you need is some education. You're on the right track. You're here watching this video, getting the basics uh, and fundamentals, but that's what this is. This is a quick primer. It's certainly not exhaustive training. So definitely seek out training or professional instruction if you need it, or uh, get some books from Tree Stuff. We have a whole category of books, a wide selection of them. And we have Jeff Jepson's The Tree Climber's Companion, which is a great selection. Uh, it covers a wide variety of topics in tree care, uh, everything from how to access the tree to how to cut the tree, the basics of rigging, everything. So I highly recommend that book. We want to make sure that we cover the basics of cutting a tree down and what that means, what it looks like to uh, rig out or dismantle a tree. So if you look at our model here, you might need to use your imagination, but you can imagine uh, maybe some more branches out here. The first thing that you would want to do when you see your tree is select the rigging point. You're going to want to get your block up as high as you possibly can. Now, obviously this side of the tree is not doing so well. So while this is really high, uh, we probably wouldn't want to put the block there. And this looks a little thin, maybe even uh, storm damage there. So probably wouldn't want to put the block here. So it looks like maybe the best place to put the block would be here. Uh, and we would call this the high rigging point. Then you imagine, you know, maybe there's a branch out here. You would tie the rope, right? Cut it and let it swing down and lower it down. Easy, uh, generally considered pretty soft rigging or lowering where you're just letting the branch hinge down and maybe you do that two or three times. Uh, if there was a obstacle, a house or a structure or something here that you didn't want to allow the branch to hinge down into and hit, maybe you need to lift the branch up. So you have your rigging point out here with the rope coming down to the tip of the branch. And then as you cut, lifting force is applied and the branch actually lifts up until it's cut away here and then falls or is lowered down to the ground. That's the basic of lifting and lowering. And you might apply those fundamentals to taking this branch off. Maybe you notch it, tip it this way, and you know it's tied here and it swings into the trunk and away from the climber. That would be ideal. Maybe uh, you end up winching this or lifting this back up to straighten it out, taking a big single cut at the bottom. Uh, there's a lot of different options that you could use there, but eventually this branch is going to be gone and you're going to be left with just the spar or the, the pole or the stick, the stem. Uh, when you're doing spar rigging, generally there's no rigging point above you. You don't have a tree or a crane or anything like that. So you need to cut the wood from above the rigging point and catch it. So if you can imagine having a block here, uh, the climber would notch the log, the log tips over and it's caught as it falls and lowers down. Spar rigging, negative rigging, right? Uh, snatch rigging, these are all terms for catching the log or catching the load. These are the hardest on the equipment. They require the biggest ropes, the biggest pulleys, and they put the most force on the tree and are generally considered uh, to be the most dangerous for the climber. So um, you would take the, the rest of the stem down that way through spar rigging. When you look at a rigging system or you're selecting the type of gear, I think it's best to start at the bottom. So you're going to start with how do I choose a friction brake? What's the right one for me? The answer is probably a porter wrap. A porter wrap is the most ubiquitous style of lowering device. Uh, it's very simple, it anchors to the tree very easily, and it allows a single user to very easily control, catch lower limbs uh, or loads of 2,000 pounds or even more. So uh, it works with pretty much any rope you can think of of the right diameter uh, and is very simple to use. There are different versions of the Porter App style lowering device. There are the Stein RC devices, which are uh, semi-fixed and actually will hold 
the bollard up here against the tree. Uh, that can be really great. Uh, and it has a lot of advantages, like you can flip the rope on and off of it. Um, does take a little more time to set up and isn't as popular here uh, in the US for sure. But there's some great options there from Stein. Uh, and then there are also fixed bollards that will ratchet around the tree, similar to the way like a GRCS works or something like that. But if you're looking for a lowering device and you don't have a porter wrap, a porter wrap's the first step. That's the one you want. You wanna get the porter wrap uh, because even if you're doing advanced rigging uh, where you're using a lifting device, chances are you probably still have a porter wrap involved uh, or need one for some aspect of that rigging scenario. If you're not gonna be doing, uh, if, you're, if you're not strictly doing lowering and you're gonna be doing lifting, you're gonna need more than a porter wrap. Maybe you need a porter wrap and a mechanical advantage setup or a porter wrap and a come along or a Mazdam three strand rope puller, which is a great tool. You can put three strand rope directly into it and crank and pull the entire length of the rope without resetting it. So uh, maybe you need some of those things. You might need different straps or slings to mount those, but you're gonna need some type of friction break usually with that pulling or lifting device. Uh, if you have say an RCW or the uh, Stein RCW winches or a GRCS, uh, you may not need an auxiliary brake because those have lifting devices built into them. The GRCS, uh, which we have a video on, is certainly the best lifting device available. It mounts to the tree directly. It has a planetary geared uh, winch built onto it and a single user can lift or lower or catch loads of up to 3,000 pounds really easily. So the GRCS is awesome. The RC is a fixed bollard. The RCW is a fixed bollard that goes here and has an external brake winch, which operates on a crank. Uh, you can't pull infinitely through something like that, but it's considerably less expensive than a GRCS. And it does pack quite a punch and it's built in really well, designed by Canadian Arborist Reg Coats. So uh, the RCW is a really good lifting scenario as well. I want to talk about the slings that we use to anchor these devices. Uh, we have videos covering all of the different sling types from whoopee to loopy to ultra to dead eye, but today we're only demonstrating the dead eye and the ultra. And that's because I think these represent the two best choices for you. Dead eye slings are very simple. It's a large girth eye uh, that goes out to a tail of varying length. They can be used in a lot of different situations. They're very uh, versatile. You can uh, usually get around the biggest trees with them and they have a very low uh, weight to diameter of tree capacity. Um, they don't aren't doubled up like whoopies or loopies are. They're usually really rugged uh, and they last a long time. So dead eyes are great. They do require you to know how to tie a knot. I have a cow hitch tied here. We have a video on that as well. You can uh, check that out and learn how to tie the cow hitch or other knots. The next thing that you see is, is the ultra sling. The Ultra Sling uh, has a pocket on the end uh, that the implement or that the rigging tool is either girth hitched or spliced into. Um, there's one of these that's the exact size for the Porter Wrap, for example, the three quarter inch Ultra Sling, which is like the flagship one. Uh, and it's the best choice for anchoring a Porter Wrap because it's just so easy. But you see these pockets in the sling. Uh, when I mounted this, all you do is you take it around the tree and you stick the, the tool through the hole that gives you the best fit and that's it. No training, no knots, no anything to learn. Uh, you can't do it wrong, right? It, it's either on or it isn't. So uh, people love these. They come in all different sizes, whether you want one for mounting a block in the tree. There's the uh, this one that comes with the OmniBlock 2.6 built onto it, which is really nice. And then there are Porter Wrap sized ones. There's also smaller ones that can be used for accessories, for tool carrying, um, a ton of different uses. Ultra slings I think are the best slings uh, for anchoring any of these rigging devices. So we talked about the friction brake and we talked about the different types of slings that are available. When you're choosing your rigging point, you're gonna wanna consider the type of work that you're doing. Are you gonna be doing any lifting? Because if you're doing lifting, you're probably gonna want something with the efficiency of a pulley, not something like a rigging thimble or rigging ring that adds friction or uh, you know even say a triple thimble or a safe block, those add friction. So if you're doing lifting, you're definitely gonna want uh, something with a rotating sheet. In fact, this OmniBlock is a great choice for lifting because it has a built-in swivel, which is gonna ensure that it orients exactly uh, where it needs to be. And then uh, it's also with a side button plate, which I can flip around to show you here. 
It's midline attachable, which is really nice, and it's super duper safe. I can do it without even looking at it, as you can see. And it uh, has that audible click. So um, the OmniBlock is a great choice if you're doing lifting. Uh, it also is, you know, works for lowering and catching, uh, but I think there might be better choices. If you're gonna just be doing some basic lowering, you might even be able to get away with a smaller pulley. They have uh, micro pulleys designed for rigging. Uh, and here's one example. This is the DMM Pinto rig, and it's uh, built onto a rope logic sling and a configuration called the rig saver. And this is really neat because it provides a choking rigging point. That is adjustable so you can see I'm adjusting it right here to the diameter of the tree and now it's on there and I can run my rigging line through here I can use this to catch lift or lower uh, within the MBS and the safe working load of the pulley and then when I'm done with it a retrieval link can catch on this ring and pull the whole device out but this is a really cool system it can also be used like a friction saver or like a rig and ring which we'll talk about here in just a second so this is the rig saver these are really neat you can only get this from rope logic uh, it's a, an exclusive and this is a really great product if you're going to be catching really big logs you want a really big block there's no doubt about that uh, there's some really great options i don't have a cmi block here to show you but the cmi blocks are really affordable and they're really durable and they uh, have been sold just tons of them. They have a great safety record. It's a great American company. And uh, I, you know, I think they're, they're pretty basic, but they do a great job uh, in that full size block. At the other end of the price spectrum, you have the DMM impact block. This is the smaller of two sizes. These come in at the highest price point, but uh, they are extremely premium. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And then you also have this new block from Notch. Uh, definitely bears a resemblance, uh, is certainly of a similar quality. Um, this is pretty cool. One big difference that you see here is this is a spring block, right? So show the other camera here too. Uh, these are really nice because even if you have gloves on, uh, you can operate this without really any manual dexterity. You can see I'm just doing it with the palm of my hand, uh, which is super nice. A DMM block uh, uses a different screw mechanism. Which, you know, it's definitely different. Um, I think that they're both really high quality options. It's just a different approach in the design. Um, but these blocks, the thing that sets these apart from uh, pulleys or things like that is that they offer impact protection. Uh, you're going to see this on all of these different models. And what that means is that the side plates are going to protect the rope from impact when the block inevitably goes banging into the tree. Um, they're also going to have really high safe working loads and minimum braking strengths uh, and are generally just going to be more rugged, more heavy duty, and they're going to survive the repetitive bashing that you get from spar rigging uh, and from catching things that are rigged above them. If you're not going to be doing any lifting for sure uh, and you're not strictly doing spar rigging, a great choice uh, I think are rigging thimbles and rigging thimbles come in ultra slings which you can use for spar rigging uh, they, or for redirects. They also come in uh, whoopee slings and all sorts of different options but one of my favorite configurations, and I've talked about this in several videos, we have a video on rigging thimbles, rigging blocks, on the micro pulleys, there's separate videos for all of those. But uh, I will talk a lot about this rig and ring configuration, and this works just like a friction saver does. It can be set from the ground, it can be retrieved from the ground. It's incredibly strong in basket strength. It's really easy to use. Uh, they're extremely rugged. You know, we guarantee these symbols for life. I don't think we've ever had to replace one for uh, a wear issue or anything like that. Uh, and it's just a super, really high quality, very simple tool that will last you a really long time and you'll be able to use a ton. So uh, I definitely like these rig and ring configurations for sure. The last, thing, uh, the last type of equipment that we really want to talk about today is what type of rope do you need? The type of rope that you select is going to be dictated primarily by the type of rigging that you're doing. Half inch rigging lines, uh, like this bull rope here, this is the Notch Kraken. It's also sold uh, in a similar configuration by Samson. 
uh, under Stable Braid. Those are probably the two, I think, most well-known brands uh, and certainly the best quality. Uh, these half inch lines, the polyester uh, jacket, polyester core, are gonna be a great option and will do most of the rigging work that you're trying to do. They are offered with a nylon core, this type of rope, you'll see that under Dinosorb um, or other names. And when you have a nylon core, the rope is gonna have a higher absorption, dynamic absorption or stretch. And that's gonna be useful if you're doing, let's say spar rigging, you're not so worried that they're about the load coming down to the ground or getting too close to things uh, and you want to lower the impact force because it has more stretch and to reduce the impact force on the climber and on the rigging point so you're going to see less shake in the tree and things like that if however you have a house right underneath where you're rigging and you're letting branches swing down and catching them you may not want to have them sagging and, and hitting the roof of the house. You won't want to catch that load and, and arrest it as, as, in as short a distance as possible. You wouldn't want to use a nylon cord rigging line. You would use a polyester cord rigging line. If you're going to be doing lifting, uh, and oftentimes a half inch rigging line or a three quarter inch rigging line uh, with polyester core is a good enough choice and will get the job done. However, sometimes you really want to limit stretch or uh, dynamic absorption, right? Uh, and when you're winching, you don't want to be like winching or lifting all of that stretch out. Uh, you want to get, you know, get the job done and uh, get the item to come up. So you might find yourself using a non-braided core rope, like a static line, like Sterling HTP or Sterling Work Pro uh, are great choices. And maybe you want to, you end up needing something with like a high modulus core, uh, which would be like a true winch line. Uh, there's a lot of different options um, in terms of that, but. Uh, you may find yourself needing something a little more static for a lifting operation. In terms of diameter, you know, half inch rigging lines are the best sellers. They do the most work. I think most normal rigging can be done with half inch lines. Obviously people need bigger ropes, uh, but you don't need a three quarter inch rope to do all of your rigging. You don't necessarily need to just go get the biggest rope possible. Three quarter inch lines are really heavy, uh, especially when they get wet. Um, they take up a lot of space and they're really expensive. Uh, I think 9 16 is a really great diameter. It will stay out a little longer than your half inch line, uh, especially if you're thinking about like upsizing to the, to the bull rope just to make yourself feel better. A lot of times the increase in MBS that you get from 9 16 will get you there without necessarily getting out the big rope. They also tend to wear a little slower just because they're bigger. Uh, and I think 9 16 ropes can be a pretty good value. Usually in terms of length, what length of rope do you need? People will usually buy bull ropes in shorter lengths and skinnier ropes in longer lengths. The reason is, is because the wood is usually bigger, closer to the ground, right? That makes sense, it's uh, super intuitive. So you don't use your three quarter inch rope to rig the stuff that's way at the top of the tree because it's smaller. Uh, and because three quarter inch ropes are, or big bull ropes are again, heavy, bulky, and expensive. So uh, I would say if, if you are only gonna get two ropes, you want a 150 foot bull rope and a 200 foot kind of standard rigging line. So half inch, 200 foot, three quarter inch, or five eighths uh, in the shorter length. That covers the types of ropes that are available pretty basically. Um, we actually have videos on the different types of ropes. It's pretty old, we should probably refilm that one. Um, but you can check that out uh, and hopefully this demo uh, and all of the different resources that we've created and highlighted within this, uh, this discussion today are really helpful for you when you're trying to find the right equipment and the right techniques to do tree care uh, where you live.